Good morning. Welcome to morning prayer at Holy Comforter Episcopal Church. It is Wednesday, January 9th. And we will begin our service of morning prayer with our opening sentence found on page 75 of the Book of Common Prayer. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Let us confess our sins before God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us together pray by reading the Vanity, found on page 82. The Lord has shown forth his glory. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Lord has shown forth his glory. Come, let us adore him. Our appointed psalm for today is Psalm 119, verses 1 through 24, on page 763. Again, that is Psalm 119, beginning on page 763. Happy are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are they who observe his decrees and seek him with all their hearts, who never do any wrong, but always walk in his ways. You laid down your commandments that we should fully keep them. Oh, that my ways were made so direct that I might keep your statutes. <clears throat> then I should not be put to shame when I regard all your commandments. I will thank you with an unfeigned heart when I have learned your righteous judgments, I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. How shall a young man cleanse his way? By keeping to your words. With my whole heart I will seek you. Let me not stray from your commandments. I treasure your promise in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Instruct me in your statutes. With my lips I will recite all the judgments of your mouth. I have taken greater delight in the way of your decrees than in all manner of riches. I will meditate on your commandments and give attention to your ways. My delight is in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Deal bountifully with your servant that I may live and keep your word. Open my eyes that I may see the wonders of your law. I am a stranger here on earth. Do not hide your commandments from me. My soul is consumed at all times with longing for your judgments. 
You have rebuked the insolent. Cursed are they who stray from your commandments. Turn from me shame and rebuke, for I have kept your decrees. Even though rulers sit and plot against me, I will meditate on your statutes. For your decrees are my delight, and they are my counselors. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the book of Genesis, beginning in the fourth chapter, verse 1 through verse 16. Now the man knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have produced a man with the help of the Lord. Next she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain a tiller of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground, and Abel for his part brought of the firstlings of his flock, their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering he had no regard. So Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. But the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is lurking at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must master it. Cain said to his brother Abel, Let us go out to the field. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. When the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it will no longer yield to you its strength. You will be a fugitive and a wanderer on earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Today you have driven me away from the soil, and I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and anyone who meets me may kill me. Then the Lord said to him, Not so. Whoever kills Cain will suffer a sevenfold vengeance. And the Lord put a mark on Cain so that no one who came upon him would kill him. Then Cain went away from the presence of the Lord and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Let us together pray by reading Canticle 11, the third song of Isaiah, which begins on page 87. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, a deep gloom enshrouds the peoples, but over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open, by day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard within your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation, and your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Our gospel reading is from the book of John, chapter 1. We will begin with verses 29 through 34, and then continue our lesson in verses 35 through 42. The next day, he saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. I did myself not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples as he watched Jesus walk by. He exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher. Where are you staying? He said to them. Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. In our scriptures today, like so many times before, the lessons have similarities and significant differences that teach us. So, the children of Adam and Eve in the Genesis reading. We have Cain, the firstborn, who grew to work the ground. And before I even go there, um, for those of you who actually speak Hebrew or on the very tiny chance that we may have Hebrew scholars that are um, in the interwebs here, I know the interwebs is not a real word, I just like that word. But for you who actually know how to pronounce some of the things correctly that I'm going to pr proceed forth and say, please now forgive my Alabama pronunciations. I'm sure I'm going to um, not actually say them correctly. But anyway, to get back on track. Cain's name comes from the Hebrew word kayan, which is derived from kana, meaning to acquire or produce. So we see where Eve is celebrating his conception and the birth, uh, the deliverance of both of them, of she and of Cain through that process, with God's help. Abel, on the other hand, who grew to be a shepherd, he was likely in charge of sheep. His name comes from the Hebrew hebel, which translates as fleeting or a vapor. And we, or even the word vanity, we will see this later or hear this later in Ecclesiastes when the teacher in Ecclesiastes reinforces over and over that all of the things that had been experienced were but a vanity. And truly, we see that Abel fulfills his namesake as fleeting or a vapor because his days are, as we call them, numbered. He exits and leaves our story too soon. Now, the Cain and Abel story is likely one of those st stories of our ancestral faith that many of us feel that we know well. Um, we've heard it so many times, uh, many of us from childhood, that we could tell it from memory. It is the story of the two offerings, one of them, Abel's, 
was good and pleasing. One of them was lacking and in, in the eyes of God versus the other. And Cain was angered, murderously angered, and he acted on it. But when we read it with um, intent, we know that this is not the entirety of the narrative. And what we hear is that there's a pause in there, a pause in which God himself notices Cain's emotion and expression, and God attempts a reasoning with Cain. And he offers him a path of acceptance and also a warning and it was a warning of the consequence of sin. Now, sin is a polarizing word. If we were to poll 100 folks in the church, I wonder how many of us would give or land on exactly the same definition of sin. So when I find myself in this situation where there's variability about our understanding, I always turn to scripture, which is literally our gold standard. And I use the New Revived Standard Version translation of the word, um, as we do in the Episcopal Lectionary. And the word sin <laughs> appears in it 418 times. Um, exactly, to give you the exact count, 297 times in the Hebrew Bible and 121 times in the New Testament. So, as you might imagine, going into the Word those 400, to get those 418 references felt a little intimidating to me. So, I settled back into what is always my second source. Not that it's, well, it's okay that it's secondary to the Scripture, but it's a wonderful source um, that I typically turn to. One of my mentors, um, and also my sponsoring priest, Father Lonnie Lacey, calls it our birthright as Episcopalians, and it is the Book of Common Prayer. So if you go to page 848 in the Book of Common Prayer, we can find a definition for sin, and I think we can all agree on it. Sin is when we follow our own will instead of following the will of God, and thereby... We are being centered on ourselves instead of God. And we distort our relationship with God, with other people, and with creation. So I think that's a really good representation of what Cain did. So again, God appeals to Cain that he must master his desire to follow his own will and his own self-centeredness, he appropriately called Cain out that that perception was distorted. Um, again, level setting who Cain was in relation to God and others, so clearly to his brother and to the good creation that God had given their family dominion over. And that is the comparison of the two offerings. Again, Abel gives the first fruits, the fatty portion, etc. All we hear in our lesson is that Cain gave an offering. But we know the rest of this violent story. He immediately goes and seeks his brother out. An innocent is slain. The ground is opened and receives the blood and therefore the tail could not be contained. The, when the tragic news comes out, a son is sent out of relationship with his family, obviously, and with God. So how different is our gospel today? We have Andrew. He had likely been aware of Jesus, at least since the previous day, that bracketed reading that we have, because he was one of John the Baptist's followers. And we see that John was openly giving testimony that Jesus was the Lamb of God. And I would love nothing more than to pause here today and sit more deeply into how rich of a testimony that would have been um, in their 
belief and culture um, based on their sacrificial system and their festival liturgy, but we'll move on. Um, but even if Andrew didn't know fully everything about Jesus at this point, he was being guided by his teacher, John, that this was the Messiah. We heard the translation, the anointed one, the one who was to come. And that's where we are when John says again in that second episode in the reading, the one that began on verse 35, the next day, look, here's the Lamb of God. And Andrew now knew that John was talking about Jesus and he was the Messiah. And for that reason, Andrew leaves John and follows Jesus. In this narrative, we also have a pause, not due to emotion or expression, but purely based in love. We can feel it across these many hundreds, thousands of years, and in the next few words. He first found his brother. Andrew then brings his brother Simon to Jesus, saying, we found the Messiah. And Simon is now named by Jesus Cephas, or as Peter, that we're familiar with. And we know the rest of this amazing story. Again, a brother is immediately sought out. Again, innocent blood is, is shed. An unused tomb is opened. And a body is received, and it could not be contained. And when this good news got out, a son brought us into a family, into the family of God. Amen. Let us together join in the Apostles' Creed found on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We will pray suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the world be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Our collect of the day. Father in heaven, who is at the baptism of Jesus in the river of Jordan, proclaim that your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized in his name will keep the covenant they have made 
and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. A colic for peace. O God, the author of peace and lover and concord, to know you is to eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A prayer for mission. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, I would like to ask the church to offer your prayers. <coughs> Seeing none in the chat, we will continue to lift the prayers of yesterday for Richard, Ken, Ellie, Bill, Judy, Brenda, and Becky. For those of you who are lifting our prayers in our weekly service bulletin, we pray for our sick, Celeste, Elaine, Roger, Charles, David, Walter, May, Bill, Cynthia, Lee and Bonnie, Urban Rhonda, Chris, Joe, Linda, and Pat. We celebrate the birthdays in the parish, especially Fred, Charles, and Quinn. We lift up those couples celebrating anniversaries. We pray for our church, our vestry, our staff, and our clergy, and for all of our upcoming events. We pray for Holy Comforter Episcopal School, those students who have returned from holiday, the teachers, staff, and administration that care for them so well and for their needs. We pray for all our local parishes, clergy and staff who are in Tallahassee, for our diocese, and for the church universal. Let us together join in the general thanksgiving found on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. A prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. I would like to offer the prayer for peace on page 815 of the prayer book. Eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love, so mightily spread abroad your spirit that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace as children of one Father. 
to whom be dominion and glory now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Y'all have a great day. Spread the light and be the church.